You want to talk about change? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today because now we are hearing from economists that we could see a catastrophic collapse. And I want to explain what is going on here because economists are now predicting that as the de-dollarization happens, it is going to lead to soaring inflation. It is going to lead to subpar American living standards and eventually millions will fall into poverty. This is why everything is currently on the line. Will we see inflation go down or up over the next 12 months? Will the U.S. economy end up in a recession? Will the next president be President Joe Biden? Will it be somebody else? Who's going to control the House? Who's going to control the Senate? All these things matter. In fact, everything is starting now. We found out yesterday that the House of Representatives passed a debt ceiling bill. And if you didn't get a chance to learn more about that, make sure you go ahead and watch that video right there. And I will explain exactly what is in this bill and how it is impacting certain spending programs. And later in this video, I will explain how that exact bill is going to impact spending pro other spending programs as well. So make sure you don't skip out on that. Make sure you watch this entire video. This includes SNAP benefits, social security, student loan forgiveness, and also tax refunds. Now, before we get into all of that, I just want to ask you one question. So answer this one question for me. If you believe that the U.S. economy is headed in the wrong direction, go ahead and hit that like button on this video. And once you've done that, let's get right back to the topic at hand. So what is going on right now? How are your How is your standard of living going to be changed forever? Well, it's going to be changed from a lot of different ways. Did you know that just recently, we started to really see the economy change. Even though things have been changing uh, from good to bad for some time, these changes have been slowly rolling out. For example, just recently we learned that Disney is gonna be laying off thousands more employees. Gap, just this morning, they announced they will lay off another 1,800. Tyson Foods will also lay off hundreds of employees as well. And Bed Bath & Beyond, they had to file for bankruptcy, just like David's bridal. This is a problem. The economy is changing. All of this shows that things are not getting better. In fact, they're getting worse. And if you need more proof of that, economists predicted that the first quarter GDP, this is the gross domestic product for the US, this was gonna be at 2%. However, it came in this morning at 1.1%. We were 0.9% off. And now you may be thinking, 0.9%, that's not bad. Well, essentially, no, it's not horrible, but it's not what we expected. And the truth is that consumers were still spending money back in January. Everything started to change in the towards the middle to end of February and into March. So according to experts now, they are expecting that the second quarter GDP is going to reflect this change in spending. And that's why the second quarter GDP, chances are, could be negative. If it is negative, followed by a third quarter uh, negative GDP print, this would mean the U.S. is in a recession. Two consecutive quarters of negative GDP. Now, you want even more proof that the U.S. economy is changing? Well, According to a recent report, Americans who make more than $200,000 per year have filed for unemployment benefits at a record pace in just the past few weeks. According to Fundstrat, they say, and I quote, an estimate of 113,793 unemployment claims were filed by Americans earning over $200,000 per year. This is the highest level since the pandemic and the trend shows this is accelerating higher, with this week likely to be the crossover point where unemployment claims over $200,000 uh, over $200,000 uh, earners exceed unemployment claims under $25,000 earners. If that is if this week is this inflection point where people that make 
over two hundred thousand dollars. There's more of them being laid off than those that are making under twenty five thousand dollars per year. That is just insane. Okay, that's an incredible turn. And the reason why this is such a big deal is because this is what we've been talking about before is we are seeing companies lay off the higher end uh, earners, people making over $100,000. Those are the ones that are losing their jobs. Now, again, it's sad to see anybody lose their job. doesn't matter if you're making $500,000 or you're making $25,000. It is sad to see it. But here's why economists are looking at this. Because if you make $200,000 per year, guess what? You're probably not living paycheck to paycheck. Chances are you don't have a massive amount of credit card debt. Now you may, but you could probably pay it off. Chances are you have some money in savings. You have some investments. You probably do own a home. They're also looking at this because if you make over $200,000 per year, chances are you're spending money on vacations. You're going to eat out. You're going to spend money at the movie theater and things like that. Go shop at retail stores because you have some disposable income. Here's the problem. If somebody that's making $200,000 per year loses that income, loses that source, guess what? You think they're going on a trip? Say they live in California. You think you're, they're going to go down to Texas for a week and then fly over to Florida and get up to New York and, and uh, you know head over to Chicago for a little bit? Probably not. So travel is going to be reduced. You, you think they're going to uh, keep spending money on going to the movie theater every single week, having pizza Fridays. You think they're going to, you know, the you know spouse is going to buy the other spouse an expensive gift. You think they're going to go shopping, you know, a couple times a month. Probably not. These are things that are going to end. This is going to hurt our economy. All these things matter. Okay. Just let's just face it. All these things matter. And all of these things are what economists have worried about for some time. And now they're worried that the Fed's decisions this week is going to impact the economy even more. But it's also how is this a debt ceiling going to get increased? Because we did find this out yesterday that yes, the House of Representatives passed the bill. I believe it was 217 to 215. So it only passed by two votes, but it still passed. Now, experts believe that this, this new credit crunch that we're sitting in now is really putting a grip on the economy. They also say that one of the other issues was the cash crunch, where Americans started to have less and less cash. Well, that started to hurt, but it went so quickly that the American people did not have time to prepare for the cash crunch or a credit crunch. Well, this is why we need to talk about cuts because according to experts, spending is going to change if the current debt ceiling bill gets passed. Now, what is going to change? Well, I wanna talk about four things. I wanna talk about social security, I wanna talk about student loans, I also wanna talk about the uh, food stamp program, and also tax refunds. I'll start with social security first. Social security will see a cut, but it will not be to your benefits, okay? You will not see social security benefits get cut, but social security or the social security administration to be specific, will see a cut in this limit, save and grow act. Because in this bill, it stipulates that 2024 spending would actually revert back to the 2022 spending levels, which means they would actually see about a 23% reduction in the social security administration's funding. This would result in the SSA being underfunded, according to reports, which would result in layoffs of thousands of workers. It would be harder to get an appointment with less field offices. We would see communication over the phone die off and collecting benefits would be harder at first. That's what we know. That's the big change for Social Security. What about student loan forgiveness? What about this one? Because I know there's what $1.6 trillion in debt that people are trying to get just wiped away. Well, Here's what we know. This bill would uh, immediately eliminate President Biden's student loan forgiveness plan. Okay, so the millions of people, millions of borrowers looking to uh, get this debt relief, they will not get it. All right, simple as that. 
What about food stamps? Well, in this bill, the the, the Republican plan would raise the, the age limit uh, for uh, work requirements. And so in order to receive food stamps, they would raise the age limit. Instead of 50, it would go to 56, okay? So obviously SNAP uh, recipients in this age group would be unable to work um, or who are unable to work would see their benefits either get eliminated or they'd be reduced substantially. So that's a big one there. Here's another one, tax refunds. How are we gonna see less tax refunds or what's gonna happen here? Well, according to uh, this bill, what's gonna happen is if this were to pass, Republicans would actually pull back funding from the IRS. So they couldn't upgrade uh, their technology. They couldn't uh, hire more IRS agents, uh, at least according to the, the AP. Now, the problems that the IRS have, have had over the past you know, handful of years, these are only gonna compound because the IRS needs additional funding. Now, do they need $80 billion of additional funding? That is what's in question. According to multiple reports, no, the IRS does not need $80 billion over the next 10 years of additional funding. Actually, about $1 billion per year would be enough to get the IRS back on track. So what we are hearing is that maybe $1 billion is all that they need. So that is what I wanted to address today. Again, experts are now saying that we could be in a, in a horrible position because a catastrophic collapse could happen sooner rather than later. And if it does, your standard of living here in the United States Will forever be changed. So if you have any questions whatsoever, please ask your questions down in the comment section below. Again, thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Consider subscribing. I'll see you guys on the next one.